Hello everyone, my name is Jason Henshin. I teach a backpacking and camping course at Temple University. Um, in 2006, I hiked the Appalachian Trail. In 2008, I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. And in 2010, I hiked the Continental Divide Trail. Many of you may, may be familiar with this collection. It's called the Triple Crown of, of, of Hiking. And um, this is uh, my background and this is what I bring to my class when I teach. So today I thought I would talk through um, some, uh, some techniques and some tricks to, uh, to camping and hiking um, from a long distance hiking perspective. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna, I brought my gear. I thought I'd talk through uh, uh, how I do a few things um, and maybe you'll learn something new. So many people may consider what I do an ultra light, ultra light hiking technique. Um, I don't, but hiking and backpacking efficiently is very important to me. And so those kind of things overlap. And so a lot of what I am doing does bring um, my pack weight down, which I consider to be very important. Um, a really big trick, your uh, greatest ally in uh, a long distance hiking and a backpacking experience is finding more than one use for as much of your gear as possible. So I want to talk through um, what that's going to look like um, for various pieces of gear. Um, that being said, uh, I did mention um, the importance of, a light, of light gear. I mean, think about it, that's kind of what it's all about. You want to hike as much as you can as long as you can, and to do so, you need to be as comfortable as you can. And to do all those things, the less weight you're carrying around, the better. Um, so that being said, uh, I before we start taking things out of my bag, I did bring a packed scale, and I thought I'd show you. Um, my backpack, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see this at all. My backpack, yeah, I'm sure you can't read that dial, but that my backpack comes in about eight pounds. Um, dry weight. Now dry weight means no water, no food, okay? Eight pounds is less than a gallon of milk, if you want to think of it that way. And so why do I care? Why am I telling you? Well, to think about the fact that you're going to walk through the woods and you're going to go on a camping trip and you're going to carry around a backpack that carry, or you're going to carry around a gallon of milk to do so before you put any um, uh, uh, actual food or water weight. Um, into your gear, that's pretty significant. You can go a long time uh, carrying around a gallon of milk, especially if it's strapped to your back and properly, uh, the weight properly distributed around your center of gravity. Um, so that being said, how does that happen? Let's go through. Let's go through a few of my uh, uh, my gear here, and I'll give you some tips. Um, I'm going to start around the front, actually. Now I weighed my weight, my pack without um, water weight, but I did want to show you um, that I have it set up in the front of my pack where I carry my water. Okay, now this is very easily done. You can get some elastic straps and some and some um, uh, uh, clips or, uh, yeah, you're familiar with them. That's what like go on hats and stuff um, to cinch this around. Okay, so I carry my water along the front of my back, along the front of my um, backpack. Now, it comes over my shoulder. Now, why would I do this? A couple reasons. The biggest one being, this pulls, this distributes weight much better throughout my pack. You're carrying enough stuff on the back. Um, it's nice to be able to carry something on the front of your pack and it actually helps pull some of that weight um, over, your, over your hips. Again, making things more, um, uh, more comfortable for you. So you can see, and then the other nice, nice part is that they're nice and accessible, okay? Anytime you need a drink of water, slip this guy off, slip this guy off, they come off very easily, have yourself some water and, and uh, reverse, okay? Especially if you're treating water, you've got it right next to you. So anyways, trick number one, find a way. Um, and this can be applied to any backpack that already exists. Um, just find the right equipment and I can help you with that if you wanna find me. Okay, excellent. I'm gonna take those off just cause it's easier. Water, and these are the flimsiest, lightest plastic. I refill these over and over again. I'm, I'm sure there are reasons why you shouldn't refill um, plastic water bottles. I never had an issue with it, never had any sickness or anything. So that's my that's my trick. Okay, excellent. You'll see in the back. Okay, we're gonna come back to my sleeping pad. Um, I actually designed I actually designed and made a bunch of my hiking gear, so I was able to make it exactly to how I uh, how I wanted to use it. Um, the pack is one example of that. Um, but this is not my design. Many many um, packs incorporate this design. This is my sleeping pad. I can show you here. I did make it very easy to take in and out. So during the day, this is a great example of, of multi-use. During the day, I can take it out like this, and I can sit on it. All that gravel, all those rocks, uh, etc., makes for a nice um, place to sit. Maybe go do that now. 
And then um, during the day, the nice part, when this is in the back of my pack, because of the um, because of the design of this kind of um, sleeping pad, like the egg carton design, um, it allows for air to flow. And so it makes for a um, uh, more comfortable fit of the backpack as you walk along. So use number one, two, and three of your sleeping pads. Sleeping pads are, are extremely important pieces of gear. Okay, Mo moving my way around the outside of the bag, you all probably keep um, maps accessible. Um, in here I have a map, compass, uh, I think I have a crossword and a pencil, you never know. Um, I also have an eating utensil, okay, one eating utensil of course, and I keep a flashlight accessible, not always in here, it happens to be in here now, but some kind of headlamp, okay. Um, one thing to know when you are camping, always, always have a large Ziploc bag. I require my students to have a large Ziploc bag um, on all of our hikes because it will keep your maps in one piece. If maps get destroyed, that's a very, very bad thing and can put you in a, in a place of real danger. So having um, a Ziploc bag allows you to take that map, fold it up the way you need it, and inside have the place, that the, the map that you're on um, visible. So if it's raining, all you need to do is pull it out, um, read that, uh, pull it out, uh, read your map, and then uh, you don't need to take it out of the Ziploc. It keeps it safe, okay? Um, excellent. The back of my bag, my students always enjoy these. These are, if you're familiar with them, uh, if you can recognize them, they are the insoles to any pair of running shoes. I took some duct tape and turned them into a camp sandal, so you can imagine how those fit in my feet. I've used these for the entire, um, most of the Pacific Crest Trail, all of the Continental Divide Trail, and this is an upcycling option. Um, but for something to wear around it, uh, in the evening, sure, Crocs work great, but they're bulky and they do they do um, weigh something. These are next to no weight and uh, they cost you nothing and they'll last for a long, long time and they're super durable walking around outside. So you might wanna consider that. Seems like a nice quarantine project now, doesn't it? Okay, excellent. And then I do have, uh, you want to have some kind of timepiece. I have a, uh, a watch that does also um, double as, um, has a compass if I need to. It has an altimeter. A altimeter is very important if you're doing a lot of um, backpacking and, and um, terrain that goes up and down a lot. Okay, let's go inside. First bag, okay. Um, aside from the gear that you are actually Aside from gear that you are actually, or I'm sorry, clothes, aside from clothes that you are actually wearing, um, the only extra I bring um, are a pair, well, let's look at it. I have um, pants. You gotta have something in case it gets cold. I generally walk in, uh, hike in shorts if I can ever, uh, if I have any say in it, uh, shorts and a t-shirt or shorts and a long sleeve shirt, but I do bring pants. I consider these my camp pants. I try not to hike in them to keep them clean and not, not smelly, but um, camp pants, um, no less. I have a bandana used for a thousand things. You can keep the sun off of you. You can wrap it around your head, keep the sweat out of your eyes. A bandana is just nice. It's light, takes up no space. Um, so that's a nice option. I like to have a, um, I like to have a, a, a long sleeve warm thing. You've got to have some kind of thermal layer. Okay, I try again not to walk in it. I try to use this only as my, um, uh, I try to use this only as my uh, camp uh, warm. But if I do need extra warmth to um, walk in, I have this option as well. I like fleece because fleece is, does great with water. It's very water resistant. Um, it's very water uh, water resistant. Uh, it does retain water, but you can uh, you can uh, wring it out very easily. Um, down, I know, is a big favorite, but because uh, water can uh, make it useless so quickly, I, I try to steer away from that as far as a thermal layer goes. I, I'm different with a sleeping bag. And I will I will note, I'm just realizing now that I don't have my jacket, but you do want to have some kind of lightweight, breathable jacket. I have a, just a very lightweight, um, uh, a very lightweight uh, rainproof jacket. I think I got it from Go Light. Um, you're familiar with them, they are everywhere now. But uh, that is one piece of gear I feel like I did forget to grab from the closet. Uh, so keep that in mind, that's absolutely imperative. Um, two pairs of socks, okay, this is an example of one. Uh, I keep, now two pairs of socks, one is to interchange. You want to, every day you want to swap out your socks by far if you're going to be on a multi-day hike. Um, I also keep one pair of socks that I only wear at night um, for camping, uh, for sleeping, I'm sorry, okay? It's my camp socks. So if you saw what I did there, I have one set of clothes exclusively for camp that if I need to, I can wear um, as an emergency layer 
um, while hiking, but for the most part, that one, that's kind of, I call it my sanity, sanity layer, because at night I need something to just, you know, whatever happened during the day, as wet as I got, as cold as I got, I've got all those things to keep me um, warm uh, uh, at camp. Anyways, camp socks, and then I have a second pair of socks that I will uh, swap out. Always wash your socks once a day, and then you've washed your socks at night, you've um, hung them on a tree, they're not dry, put them on the back of your pack, walk along with them, let them sway in the breeze, they'll be dry by the time you next need them, okay? Extra water bladder, like this, okay? Always good to have, who knows, where you, especially if you're gonna be hiking in drier um, climates, okay? And then very briefly, uh, my ditty bag, I call my ditty bag. A variety of things that I keep in here. Um, I will bring toilet paper out. I have toilet paper, but always not always necessary. You should, uh, you should look up the backcountry bidet. There are options that you do not need uh, toilet paper in the outdoors. Sounds crazy, creepy, and disgusting, but not not so much. See what you find. Um, I will leave it at that. Get your Google on. Okay, first aid kit. Everybody should have a first aid kit. I'm not gonna go through exactly what's in mine, but you wanna have things that are specific to you. Um, you know what those are. If you sprain ankles easily, you should have an ace bandage. Maybe somebody else um, scratches easy and uh, uh, is more concerned about um, about uh, about blood. You, you should have uh, band-aids or gauze pads, whatever works for you. Um, I will say uh, trekking poles. Um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Um, trekking poles have uh, I put duct tape around the, the trekking poles to help as as um, an adhesive for bandage and gauze and stuff. Um, an option. Always have rope. You never know what you're going to need ropes for. So rope is something. I have a really fine gauge. I've never needed more than this. It does a thousand things. Um, sunscreen, then all the little stuff. Um, fingernail clippers, if you're gone for long amounts of time, that's gonna be something you wanna consider. Some kind of, something that cuts. If you're not comfortable with a pocket knife, have a scissors, I have a, a very compact pocket knife. Never needed anything more than this, so definitely something that cuts. Okay, um, I have a uh, sewing repair kit. I have used this on multiple occasions. Okay, something good to have. Um, a lighter. Matches and lighter probably the best. And I have a, I carry a backup a backup light. Um, this is tiny tiny backup light. If something happens to your headlamp, if you all know that if you've been out camping, something happens to your headlamp, um, and and a dark night, you have nothing. It's very very dark in the middle of in the middle of the wilderness. So having something to help you in the middle of the night um, if your headlamp goes or it's lost or something is really important. Okay. Um, and then briefly, I wanted to. Uh, We'll come to trekking poles in a sec. I want to note that that's actually, aside from my tent and sleeping bag, that is all my gear. Now you'll notice, big question is probably, well, what about cooking? Uh, I do not cook while I am long distance hiking. What do I? What I do instead is use dehydrated foods. Now that sounds, you might think, I don't have a dehydrator, or what does that mean? I can't spend months making food. Well, that's not necessarily, um, that's, that's not uh, necessary. Um, there's a lot of foods that are already ready dehydrated that you could very easily just add water to. And I would spend weeks just eating these out of the grocery store. Ramen noodles, um, uh, uh, instant mashed potatoes, stove top stuffing is one of my favorite. Couscous actually, you can just sit in water. So there's a lot of good options and that's for the grains. And then the proteins, uh, the proteins and everything else uh, is much easier. I would carry a vial of uh, olive oil with me because you can't dehydrate fat. I and mean, then you can add olive oil to all your meals. But this keeps you from having to, this is my mess kit, I, what I have used long, long ago. Um, uh, but it keeps you from carrying this whole, all the bulk of this, the weight of this. Um, and then when you get into town, you have to find fuel. It's just a lot of pieces. Um, so that being said, um, something to bypass. Uh, I'm not gonna, gonna, going to go into great length, but um, look into denatured alcohol stoves. If you are gonna be using a stove, um, that's your best friend. Uh, if you're using denatured alcohol, one trick to that is you can use this stuff called heat. It's actually um, used for fuel line freeze up in cars. You can find it at most gas stations. So if you run out of denatured alcohol, um, you have this to lean on um, at a local gas station. And chances are they have it. It's very, very, very common. Um, anyways, so that being said, if you're not carrying this, it's so much you don't have to um, worry yourself with, um, and it just makes your life a lot simpler. And that's kind of that's largely how I can get uh, a pack weight down um, to a more efficient uh, weight. So, anyways, leave that as it is. Okay, two more pieces here. Almost through it all. Okay, one your tent. Okay, many of you may be familiar with a tarp tent. A tarp tent is a, a tent that uses. Uh, largely what defines it as a tarp tent is that it doesn't have poles 
um, instead it uses trekking poles. Um, this is my tarp tent. You can see there are no poles in there. Okay, there are some stakes, but for the most part, this is an A-frame tent. I'm not gonna set it up now, but it's an A-frame tent um, that then takes trekking poles at each end, if you can consider, and then the trekking poles kind of like reach out and the tent straight, um, strings across it. it. Looks like something like this. Um, and is an extremely efficient way. Uh, tent, tarp tents in general are just extremely efficient way of sleeping. I think my whole tent weighs around a pound, something like that. Not including poles, okay? I talked about trekking poles. Um, I do use trekking poles for that reason, um, but this is another great example of uh, something with two purposes. Um, trekking poles I use throughout the day, okay? And then at night, instead of just sitting idly, they're keeping my tent up, okay? Huge, huge benefit to using a tarp tent. Um, for exactly that reason. And you'll see here, here's my duct tape that I was telling you about. For a thousand reasons, you know, your shoes break, um, your bag rips, mice got through your food bag. I mean, there's so many things, not to mention like band-aids or first aid care uh, in a worst case scenario. Uh, anyway, so I've had these now for, for uh, two of my hikes, uh, two um, Mexico to Canada hikes, and they, they're still rocking along. Lucky is an excellent company. I'm sure there are a lot of them by now. Awesome, trekking poles, okay? Okay, lastly, I want to show you one big trick. Oh, last two things, I'm sorry. Um, one thing I did not should disclose in my first bag, uh, water filter or water um, treatment is something really important, okay? This is my water treatment, okay? It's an old Visine bottle that's been all X'd out, okay? Any of you curious what might be in here? Any guesses? The answer is bleach. I use bleach to treat my water. This one dropper of bleach will last me weeks, uh, well, probably more than a month on the trail. Um, one drop of bleach per liter of water, uh, and then wait half an hour. Uh, I would I would verify this in other places. This is what I use to keep myself healthy and safe for um, for months at a time. Uh, I can't I can't stamp any kind of CDC uh, clearance on it or or Food and Drug Administration safety. This is what I've done. This is what I uh, learned, and I can tell you that it, from my personal experience, I it, it is what kept me safe. I never. Um, uh, had any kind of uh, intestinal bug or any kind of water uh, waterborne illness, um, so I have that to, to thank. Bleach, and you can get this anywhere. I mean, you can every, every it's anywhere. If you ever run out of it on the trail, everyone's got bleach, and it's very cheap and easy. So, um, big trick for water purification. Okay, excellent. We did that, and then our last big piece of gear here. Okay, I want to show you how I do this. Is your sleeping bag? Sleeping bag is what I consider the most important piece of your uh, hiking equipment, okay? Why? Because it will keep you alive in a, in a scenario uh, of extreme cold, okay? So it's really important to keep your sleeping bag dry. I do lean on a down sleeping bag. It's one of the few um, examples um, of a natural material that is that far, far surpasses anything that we can make, um, uh, that, that humans can create at the moment, in my opinion. Um, that being said, you'll see that I'm taking it out of a plastic bag. I don't use a pack cover, I use a plastic bag so that if it rains, um, my sleeping bag is lodged firmly inside of here, okay? Everything out here is gonna get drenched with rain, that's fine, that's fine. If you, even if you, for those of you who use pack covers, you know that pack cover, that water's gonna find its way in anyways. So that being said, um, that being said, I pull, uh, uh, once I am in a covering, I'm in my tent and I know that I'm away from rain, I pull my very, very dry sleeping bag out, okay? Um, let's just say, back up real quick, let's just say that um, you do see the rain is coming. Uh, you don't want everything inside your pack to get wet, no problem. What you're gonna do is um, take, you're gonna open up your bag, you're gonna stuff everything in your bag, you're gonna cinch it tight, okay? And no water's gonna get in, it's a, it's a garbage bag. I mean, you've thrown garbage away, it's, it's an amazing material. Um, and it's going to keep everything extremely watertight, safe, and dry in the bag, okay? So, um, that being said, that's where I keep my sleeping bag, okay? Pull this guy out. Okay, this is also a piece of gear that I did make. I made um, on my tent, my sleeping bag, and my um, and my backpack, okay? So you can see, that it's a, I, mean, I made it to my dimensions, I uh, and it, it's probably somewhere around a zero degree bag. Um, but it keeps me extremely warm when needed, when needed, okay? Um, and that's everything as you see. You know, the last thing I, I wanted to, to very briefly touch on is um, uh, a sleeping, um, is a sleeping um, strategy at night, let's call it. For any of you who have been in the AT and you're in cramped quarters, um, one thing you, wanna, you need to do is you need to find a way to sleep 
efficiently so you're not on top of everybody else. Um, so in doing so, I have a sleeping pad that is not my full body's length, okay? You wanna find a way that everything, everything is going to be um, compact. Okay, and so in doing, let me just change this, move this camera up a little bit, so. Let's see if you can see me on the ground here, maybe a little bit better. Okay, so you lay out your sleeping, sleeping pad. Okay, you've hung your food, so we don't need to worry about food. Food, uh, I'm sorry, food, yes, let's call this your, you've hung your food, you have it in a different bag, okay? You've hung your food. This is what's left over of clothes and your um, your jacket, etc. okay? So this is leftover fluffy soft stuff, okay? We're gonna consider that, we're gonna consider that a pillow. Put this down here. So you don't need, you don't need your head to be on the mat. Instead, you've got your pillow, great. So one reason you don't need the full length mat all the way from head to toes, okay? The tent's being set up, so we're gonna pretend like this is over us. The trekking poles are holding them up, so that's over us as well. Okay, your sleeping bag, we're gonna be inside, which leaves us with our pack, okay? Again, our sleeping pad is, isn't our full body length because you don't need it. So instead, your pack will prove as the end of your will prove as the end of your sleeping pad um, body length. Okay, my feet now are going to hang on my on my sleeping uh, off of my sleeping pad. Uh, will prove to be the end of my sleeping pad. Okay, because um, it's not entire of all the things in your body that need to stay warm. This is what needs to stay warm. Make sure that's over your body pad. Make sure your hips are over your your pad. Okay, and then lastly, now that we've got ourselves set up. Remember, your pad is what's meant to keep you, to keep um, your body warmth in, uh, uh, be the barrier between you and the ground, okay? When you compress down, it's not doing anything to keep you warm. So that being said, don't don't sleep on your down, in a down mummy bag, keep that zipper open, okay? So you can see, I'm gonna put my legs onto my, you can't see, because it's off the screen, uh, my legs are gonna go onto my backpack, okay? My head's gonna go onto my pillow, and then I'm just gonna drape my, my, my down over me, over top, and I'm just gonna lay on the sleeping pad. Let the sleeping pad do what it's supposed to, okay? And it's gonna look like this. This way you're using all the warmth of your down, okay? And you're not compressing it by sleeping on it, and you've got your, um, you're staying warm from the, from the ground because you're on your pad, okay? And what this is doing, this is using all of your gear all of your gear, now you're in that clamped um, shelter or you're in a, a two-man sleeping tent, a three, per, three people in your two-man sleeping tent, you have only the, your exact space. This allows you to, to keep all of your equipment um, with you um, in a very efficient manner, okay? And see how this is using, this is giving your backpack a use during the, during the night when it's otherwise not doing anything. Everything's got a use, okay? So that's how I've, that's how I've lasted, you could say for all these, um, all these years and all these uh, nights hiking in the, in the back country. Um, the more you enjoy yourself, the more you wanna do it. And trust me, you wanna do this as much as you can in your life. So I hope there was something here that was helpful, something new that you learned. Um, and uh, otherwise, please get out, enjoy some of this beautiful, uh, this beautiful land and, uh, and happy hiking. Thanks everyone, be well.